Hi my name is Matt, welcome back to the shop and today we are doing power bands. So there are two main things we're going to focus on, it's what are power bands and why are they important and what does it do and yeah so why, what, how, who and all the rest of it. So meet Dave, Dave sat at his work desk and he has no legs and this is the best analogy I can think of of making it really simple to describe um, what a power band is and where the actual band comes from. So Dave works in an assembly plant where he takes a bolt and he takes a nut, he threads them together and then sticks them in the done box. So here there's a box, a tray and another little table where a machine drops a bolt in and a nut. He then picks them, puts them together and then puts them on the out tray. Quite simple stuff. So that's the out. So the way this works is, is every 10 seconds, once every 10 seconds, a bolt and a nut is dropped in to the in tray. They wind them together and put them in the out tray. Now at this once every 10 seconds, there's a bolt put in, a nut, Dave puts it together and then Dave puts it back in this tray on the out tray. Now Dave can do this in about two seconds. So Dave does it, gets his bolt, puts in a tray, and then he sits and he waits for eight seconds and then the next bolt arrives and he carries on. So then what we do is we increase the production rate and a bolt drops in here about once every three seconds and Dave's quite content with this because he can pick up a bolt, put it down in the tray and then pick up another one, put it in the tray and he has to wait half a second to a second so it's quite nice, he picks it up and he gets a nice pace going. So the input him doing it and then the output is a nice pace, it's nicely going along and every time a bolt appears he's putting one in the tray and everything flows really nicely. Now if we increase the production rate again and drop a bolt in every second, Dave starts to rush now and he's really rushing and he's taking one out of the tray, sticking it on and eventually what happens is, is he ends up with a mound of bolts and pretty much one in the tray because he isn't fast enough. He's doing exactly the same thing but he cannot keep up. The supply is so much faster than what he can do. Now this all seems bonkers but this is exactly how your engine works. So just like Dave at the beginning when he was getting one and then he's got 10 seconds to stick it in the tray, this is your engine at idle. It takes in air, it processes it by igniting the fuel air mixture to produce pressure which then produces torque and then it just sits there and chugs along. Or well, this is at very low at revs, just say first gear and you're just letting the clutch out. And it's very easy for the engine to do this. However, the power and torque production of the engine is very low. Dave's production per second, per every 10 seconds is one. It's very low, very slow going, but the Dave and the engine can quite easily do it. So then we get to the point where Dave's doing a bolt every three seconds and this is lovely, there's a nice flow, he's not getting bored, he's not getting lethargic, his production rate is really good, you know, he's producing a bolt, a bolt every three seconds compared to the one every ten seconds, and everything is flowing nice, bolts are going in and going out, going in and going out, Dave's content and everything's brilliant. This is the same with an engine, you, there's, a, there's a point, there's a, a rev range in the engine where everything just flows great. And then we get to the final scenario where there's a bolt being dropped in the bin every second and Dave, you know, try as he might, he can't keep up and production ends up slowing down and it just turns to rat shit. This is the same as the engine. When you go like maximum revs, the production of the engine is high, not as nice as it was in the power band, which is what the power band is, that nice bit where Dave's producing one bolt every three seconds, everything's flowing great, and that's what a power band is. So now if we actually just flip this straight over to our engine, we'll find that in low RPM, the horsepower is low because horsepower is a measurement of torque and RPM. I've got a video link here describing that. But because it's torque and RPM, if the RPMs are low, no matter how much torque you're producing, your horsepower is going to be low. And then obviously you get to this sweet spot um, at the top here, and then it just starts to fall off again. And it's this 
section here, this rising section here, which is what we call our power band. And it says, you know, you've got to try and keep your bike in the power band, or the bike staying in the power band, or the gearbox tries to keep the engine within the power band. We'll get to that in a minute, and this is only in one gear. So this can be fifth gear, this can be first gear, it doesn't really matter. The power band is um, the amount of power over a rev range. So what causes um, this lack of production low down and then when you get into the middle of your rev range it's all nice and there's a power band and then it starts to fall off. Well with Dave it was his ability to screw nuts together. With engines it's all about time. So at low revs the valve is open, air fuel mixture goes in at a kind of lazy pace, the valve closes, the piston compresses it and bang and your torque is low and your horsepower is low per minute because you're only doing a thousand rpm just as you pull off or in tick over or whatever you just start to go and chug 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 then what happens is is that you get into the power band which is the engine's um, circulatory system not circulatory system you can think of it as respiration system where the engine is breathing in and breathing out at a lovely steady pace so when you're in the power band air is flooding in because it's gained some acceleration from the um, intake stroke before it fresh charge floods in to the cylinder it closes in time you've got nearly 100 percent fill in the piston goes bang it's great you get torque out of it and then you shit out your exhaust and everything can you know cycle everything starts all over again the problem is is when you start to go beyond the power band what happens is is that the engine RPM is increasing, we saw from that graph that the engine RPM is always increasing. So what's happening now is that the engine's really chugging away and when the valve opens, air and fuel mixture try to get in but the valve closes again because the engine's going so fast that there isn't enough time to fully fill the cylinder. And this obviously, if you've got like a, I don't know, 65% filling, then your torque is going to drop off, your horsepower is going to drop off and that's why there is this fall off after the power band. Basically the engine starts to choke, it can't get enough mixture of fuel and air into the cylinder quick enough before the, ne you know, before the next process, before the next stroke. So to summarise, a power band is this section of a curve, this entire section here, where the engine is most efficient, it's at its best, intake velocities are at their maximum and the engine just likes to sit there like that. Now where is the power band with engines? It all depends how the engine is built and it's one of the first things that they uh, calculate and theorise about when they're actually building engines in the first place. So uh, yeah, it's pretty simple stuff, that's what a power band is. It's not like I heard someone say a long time ago, my power band needs replacing, where do I buy one? Any road, um, hope you like these videos and all the rest of it. Uh, if you've got any questions or whatever, stick them down in the... And uh, leave me a comment, go on Facebook. If you've got any serious questions or questions relating to your specific machine and what have you. And I'll see you in a bit.